Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If this is your first time here and you enjoy what you are hearing, or you have been here already and haven't done so, please do me a favor. Hit that little subscribe button and make sure you set your notifications to all. Not only does it help this channel, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro, an ad will play. I'll read the first story an ad will play. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. My mom lives in the UK and has a schizophrenic neighbor. He wanders through the hallways, no nudes, but he does not wear shoes. Also, he's very dirty. The whole hallway floor is covered with dirty feet. He also started jumping on other neighbors' balconies' roofs, also on my mom's. The ring glass sensor set off the alarm because of the loud banging noise. I received the alert and checked my mom's balcony camera and saw feet jumping on the roof. I got onto a plane to the UK, visited my mom's apartment building, and saw him on my mom's balcony roof. I entered the apartment, got onto the balcony, grabbed the vacuum, and started banging on the roof. He was scared but definitely not going away. My mom's other 11-year-old son I am 23, has a drone. I grabbed it, connected it to my phone, and started recording him. I called the police. They arrived and I showed them the video. They immediately started doing something and they got him back home. Turns out, he climbed to a vent and got to other balconies. He also leaves his door open and his apartment is dirty and it stinks. The whole hallway stinks. He tried jumping out of the window, but a woman passing by called the police. His parents do nothing about it. My mom and I called the police multiple times. He always goes to jail, but his mom bells him out. My mom is considering moving to the U.S., but we'll see. To make matters worse, he also drops around six kilograms of poop out the window every week. So, I have a really creepy neighbor. Let's call him Todd. When I first moved into my house, Todd just seemed like your average 50-something-year-old suburban guy. But as time went on, that became far from the truth as he progressively got weirder. The way my house is set up, it's directly at the end of a cul-de-sac. Todd's house is right next to mine, unfortunately. So that's given Todd a bit of gall, I guess. Now, here are the creepiest things he's done to date. Number one, he shows up at places me and my kids go to, and even my job, acting like he's just a customer or looking around. Number two, he asks my kids questions and talks to them while I'm not looking. Number three, he waits until my husband leaves for work to try and come over to my house. Number four, does the landscaping on my property nobody asked him for, but said we needed it. Number five, hurries out of his house to check mail when me and my kids pull into the driveway. But as he's doing this, he's obviously checking out me and my daughters, both minors, by the way, or blatantly hits on us from afar and blows kisses. Number six, smokes cigarettes directly in front of my house at night, staring into the windows, and will stare at our cameras too. 
Remember, my house is on a cul-de-sac. Why are you coming up to my house? You're intentionally walking to the end, dude. Now, the last thing he did just did it for me. I mean, I was done. I caught him on camera looking into my daughter's bedroom. At that point, it was no longer ha-ha and funny anymore. Of course, it never was, but I couldn't just keep brushing it off. I thought I might be overthinking it, but now I had concrete proof of his stalkerish, pedo ways. When I saw his wife, I confronted her and told her everything he had done and showed her the footage. She was outraged. She thanked me for letting her know, and we didn't speak after that. That was weeks ago. A few days ago, Todd showed up at my door, yelling that I had destroyed his marriage and told me I should have minded my own business. I told him maybe he shouldn't have been peeping into little girl bedrooms. He stood quiet for a second, laughed, and said I made a huge mistake telling his wife, so be careful, and then he left. I don't know what to make of that. I'm thinking, what the hell's that supposed to mean? All I know is, I've been really paranoid since he said that. I don't even let my kids play outside, like how they used to. I feel unsafe now. I regret saying anything, especially after that, because I may have ruined a marriage, but I don't know what the hell I was supposed to do. He was preying on my kids and being a weirdo. This has been weighing heavy on me. Should I have went about that differently? What should I do about what he said? I'd appreciate any advice from anyone. Before I get started, I want to apologize in advance for the length of my story. Last September, I began to lose sleep due to extremely loud noises emanating from a unit below me each night. The resident, whom I will refer to as Sally, is an elderly woman who had always been fairly quiet during the months leading up to September. Shortly after the noises began, I learned that her son, whom I will refer to as Bob, was staying with her. I quickly deduced that it was he who was making the noise. One day, after several consecutive sleepless nights, I went downstairs to bring the issue to Sally's attention. She was amicable and understanding, and I left feeling good about our interaction, hopeful that things would improve. However, they did not. A few more sleepless nights went by, and I found myself at Sally's door once again, this time in the evening while the noises were occurring, rather than waiting until the following day as I had done the first time. Again, Sally was friendly and kind, and I was confident that this time things would be better. Spoiler alert, nothing changed. In retrospect, I realize it was foolish of me to speak with her a third time, but I did because I really wanted to work things out as neighbors rather than dodging a formal complaint, which would result in a tense and awkward relationship with Sally afterwards. When I spoke with her the last time, it was during the day, and Bob thought I was there to complain about daytime noises. From behind Sally, he said in a hostile tone, it's the middle of the day. I did not want to talk to them again after that. I ended up filing a formal complaint in November. I emailed the building manager, a detailed log that documented each and every event. And shortly afterwards, they gave Sally a warning notice. The following day, Sally stopped me in the hallway and asked if I had complained about her son. This caught me off guard, and I responded honestly. She said that if she were to receive another notice, she would get kicked out. 
She also told me that Bob was no longer staying with her, which turned out to be a lie because I saw him entering the building the very next evening. He did go away for a while, but soon came back and has been staying on the property on and off over the last several months. And each time he is here, I am unable to get more than 20 to 30 minutes of uninterrupted partial sleep because of the indescribably loud noises he makes. I have called the After Hours Security Company countless times, and unfortunately, it has made no difference. Once, presumably while Sally was out, Bob began yelling through the ceiling, which is my floor, in a way that led me to wonder if he was inebriated. It was extremely aggressive and savage, for lack of a better word, and I felt genuinely afraid. While I have no way of proving this, I strongly suspect that Bob is not an actual resident, i.e. that he is not an actual leaseholder. This compounds my frustration because it is Sally's responsibility to ensure that he is a courteous and respectful guest, but he is neither a rightful resident nor a courteous one. I have complained to the building manager again, but they are rather slow in responding. Meanwhile, I am slowly losing my mind and unable to find much peace and quiet in my own home. I also feel awkward knowing that Bob has a criminal background. I saw his name on a package in the lobby where all of our packages get delivered, and so I decided I would look him up online. I found several police reports that mention both him and Sally, who, in fact, has reported him to the police herself due to his violent behavior towards her, ergo threatening her and throwing dishes at her. One even states she is afraid of him. Last night, Bob kept me up from about 12.45 a.m. until 5.35 a.m., and quiet hours are from 10 p.m., to 7 a.m. I cannot begin to describe the amount of self-control it has taken not to retaliate ever since Bob began staying here. However, this morning, I completely lost it. I retaliated big time for about five hours straight. I feel so alone and helpless in this matter, to be honest. While retaliating does come with a sense of satisfaction, I cannot bring myself to do this with any regularity. I would really appreciate it if you guys would please share ideas or advice as to what I could do. I'm not able to move currently, so I'm afraid that isn't an option. I am not a U.S. citizen. This is my sixth year living in the U.S. I moved one state over because of a job offer in March of 2020. Didn't have much savings, so I picked an apartment complex on the cheaper end in an area that I deemed somewhat safe after looking up crime maps, roads, street view photos, and so on. Plus, they were offering a promotion at the time. Moved into this unit on the ground floor. The building has three floors. Things were fine. I leave for work in the morning and came home between 5 to 6 p.m. and go to bed at around 11 p.m. I did not know the person who lived above me, except I heard the full process of them having sex twice. Since it doesn't happen every day, I didn't pay much mind to it. Everybody fucks. I get it. Then, this couple with a young son moved into the unit above me, and shit went straight to rock bottom. The stay-at-home mother can barely speak English, while the father speaks broken English. I do not know if the kid goes to school or preschool or something. They moved in in August, and it was warm outside. I have seen the mother multiple times outside in the parking lot always watching over the sun playing. Then comes winter. 
Two out of five weekdays, I attend a two-hour class online. The kid has several tennis balls, and he throws and bounces these balls on the floor. This continues until the child goes to bed at somewhere between 10 and 11, multiple nights a week. After a month of waiting and seeing no change in this behavior, I sent my first complaint email to the apartment management. Their reply was, okay, we will send a notice to them. If this continues, reach out to me again. I knocked on their door one night in October and asked if the mother could stop the kid from bouncing the balls when the noise was becoming unbearable and I was trying to focus on the lecture. She kept saying, excuse me, but I guess she meant, sorry. This continued well into November of 2023. I sent a second noise complaint email with a recording of all the noise attached to management. Their reply was, thanks for sending the recording. I knocked on their door for the second time, asking them to stop bouncing the ball. The same, excuse me, reply came from the mother again. December was somewhat easier to put through because I was away for two weeks. Came back on January 2nd of 2024 to return to work. The kid stopped throwing the tennis balls, but the running around got much worse, and they also started screaming and burst out crying from time to time. I did some research to see what the rules of my municipality regarding residential noises are and found nothing, except for some mentions of excessive dog barking. I knocked on their door for the third time and said that this was my third time talking to them. I was in the middle of a lecture. I could not focus on the teacher at all and I hoped the kid could stop running around and making stomping noises. Soon, I heard the mother talking to a man in a frustrated tone. Ten minutes later, a man knocked on my door. I opened. What he said basically are the following. The kid is his son, and he plays every day until 11 p.m. The stomping and running noise is totally normal. It's just a kid playing. It's 8 p.m., 8.05 p.m., that's when he came knocking. And why is his kid playing not okay? If I have a problem, I need to talk to the apartment management. I should not come knocking on his door. It's his home, and I'm bothering him. The only thing keeping me from doing something stupid is my lease will end in late March and I have a place I can move into. I'm on Prozac and have seasonal affective disorder. I'm struggling to get back to work on time daily. My mental health is horrible. I'm in a constant bad mood. My work efficiency has dropped. My boss is unhappy with me and I come home every single day to this situation. My move in has been planned months ago for a different reason. I'm quitting my current job in my current state as well, but this situation makes me so sad. I do not have children, and I want every child to be able to play somehow freely. I hope and want people who came here to seek a better life to get what they are looking for, for I am one of them. But for my sanity, I had to tell them to stop making noises and now I'm scared of retaliation from the family and the father. I have purchased multiple pairs of active noise-canceling headphones, and none of them work well enough to block out their noises. Why am I spending my hard-earned money to fix how someone else's indifference and rudeness affected me? My last card is to call the police, but... That is a big hit or miss, and it could bring even more repercussions. I do not want to do it unless I am in physical danger, because I am not sure the police would do anything or whether I would put myself in bigger trouble by doing that. It is my fault to agree to an apartment unit on the ground floor. It is also my fault to rent in a cheap apartment complex. 
It's my fault for not having enough money to own a home. Can we please have some semi-noise isolating apartments? Why are apartments all so horrible? I can hear them closing a cabinet door in the kitchen, chopping food, flushing the toilet, running water, talking, watching TV, walking around the floor creaks over the entire place while 80% of the apartment is carpeted. I might get a monthly rated room at an in-town suite or something. I dread every morning and evening. I'm tired of life. It's either someone hurting me or me hurting someone else. This is probably a more mild story, and I will probably sound like a Karen. Me and my neighbor basically share a backyard, and it's divided by a wooden fence. Our backyard spans about 25 feet from the house to the fence. That separates the yards, and my bedroom overlooks their backyard. I can see their entire yard from my bedroom window. They have a screened-in porch that is about 50 to 60 feet away from my window where they hang out. They moved in about two years ago, and they are incredibly noisy. Their kids yell and scream constantly. The mother is going outside at least twice a day to yell for their cat. The dad yells at the outdoor TV. They get drunk and have noisy get-togethers, and good God, their dog. I get going outside to call for your cat, but she will stand on their screen porch and yell for 20 minutes at least until either the cat shows up or she gives up. The dad watches football on the TV in the screen porch and is swearing at the TV every Saturday when college football is on. And the kids watch their annoying-ass kid shows on full fucking volume. I've heard the mom go outside and tell them to turn it down, but they promptly turn it back up. They have noisy get-togethers that last until 2 to 3 a.m. in the middle of the week. After a certain point, they start to get noisy, and you can tell they've been drinking, which is fine. I don't give a fuck if you drink, but be respectful and keep the volume down if it's when people are trying to sleep. Now, for the biggest issue, their dog. They have some kind of doodle dog. I've trained dogs, and I'm fairly certain this dog has had some kind of traumatic experience or has OCD. OCD type behaviors are extremely common in poodle mixes due to poor breeding. Either way, this dog has two spots along the fence it will go to and bark for hours on end. There is nothing there. It will just bark until they get annoyed and let it in or until my next door neighbors go and tell them to let it in. In the summer, they leave the door open for it at night so it can come and go and do its business. Usually what happens is the dog barks for a couple of hours, goes inside for 20 minutes, then it will bark for 30-ish minutes and go inside for 10 and repeat the cycle until they let it in, usually at around 7 a.m., the neighbors left a passive-aggressive Facebook post about controlling your dog's barking, clearly aimed at them. Eventually, I got fed up and called our non-emergency line as the dog had been barking from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. in the middle of the work week. I know how to train dogs, but I am not a professional, so when their dog got out and I had to take it back to them, I said something along the lines of, Hey, I live behind y'all. I've noticed your dog barks quite a lot. I have a lot of experience with training dogs. I'm not training one right now, but I would love to help you find a trainer who can help you. They thanked me, took my information, and I never heard from them. They've been offered help, 
The police have been called by several people in the neighborhood, and people are begging them to control it, but nothing has changed. I'm 18, and I am counting down the days until I move out. Hello there. Can anyone please give me any advice on what you would do in this situation? I did my laundry in a community laundry room in my apartment complex, and after my last drying load finished, I went to get it, but it was messed up. Someone put a ton of lint inside the machine, and it went all over my clothes. I also saw that I was opened because instead of saying zero, time-wise, it says 250, which is the price. It means someone opened the machine. I don't mind other people opening machines to check if it's empty, but opening it and messing up my clothes, that's another story. As I was doing my laundry, I saw one other lady doing it. She is older. I knew it was her because when I went in to grab my stuff, she looked at me with an evil smile and ran out the door. I already thought she was odd. I ignored it and only pieced the behavior together once I found out what she had done. I only saw her one more time. I have no idea what brought her to do this because I didn't leave my load sitting there for long. I was still hot when I grabbed my stuff because I came back as soon as it was done because I set a timer. Also, when I do my laundry, I only use one machine and one dryer. I also only do my laundry once a month, and I normally do four loads. I don't know her name or her unit number. Had I known, I would have brought the lint back to her front door. I brought this up to the apartment manager, but he didn't offer any help. He keeps saying there aren't cameras in the laundry room, which I'm aware of. I was hoping I could get the key fob information of the person who used the laundry room in that span of time so that I can talk to the neighbor and figure out the issue. Or at least a message saying that they will let the neighbor know that it's not cool to put lint in other people's clothes. I know they could do this because I heard people who are loud during quiet times get messages from the management telling them to quiet down. They advised me to get a police report so that they could release the fob information. So I did, but the police said there's no crime. It's vandalism and harassment, but it didn't cost a whopping $400 in damage to anyone's property. The police offered to meet the manager, but the manager said there's no one available to talk to besides the police. I assumed he's probably working remote. Please give me any advice on what you would do in this situation. I try my best not to add commentary, but I feel this person in the laundry room situation. I used to live in apartment complexes, and downstairs was a laundry room. There was two washers, two dryers. Every time I went in there, they were full. This lady that had, I don't know, 200,000 kids would bring all the laundry and take up every washer and every dryer. And she told everyone to stay the hell out of the laundry room because she doesn't want her laundry mess with. Okay, cool. The stuff in the washer, when it's done, she could have at least stored it in a basket until it was ready for the dryer so someone else can use the washers. But no, she didn't do that. And then she would stay away from the laundry room for, I don't know, all day. So I took it upon myself and took all of her clothes out of the washer, threw it on, on top of the dryer, and wrote a note and said, this apartment complex doesn't belong to you and other people have to wash their clothes. So I washed my clothes, took her clothes out of the dryer, dried my own load, and then stuck her clothes right back in the dryer. She left a note on my door, and that's when I turned it in to the landlord, and she got a warning. She actually got her 
um, code disabled to the laundry room. And every time she had to do laundry for a month, she had to go get the landlord. <laughs> Oh, Lord. It wasn't her first complaint, so that's why I found it funny. Anyway, let's get back to these stories. My wife and I recently moved to Hendersonville, Nevada. I grew up out there and love the area and the people. I never had any issues with neighbors growing up. We decided to move back west and escape the purgatory that is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Unfortunately, we aren't rich and our credit sucks, so we decided to rent a little one-bedroom apartment in the Green Valley area for the first year or so to save some money. We both lived in apartments for 10 to 15 years in different areas, so we didn't foresee any issues. We found a cute little apartment complex surrounded by a golf course and were excited to have a little greenery close to home since that was the only thing we were really going to miss about the Myrtle Beach. We figured the worst thing that could happen or worry about would be a stray golf ball hitting our car or windows, but weren't really concerned. In early November, while moving our stuff into the apartment and out of the Pinsk truck, we met a seemingly kind 30-ish year old woman holding a maybe two or three year old baby who simply stated, Sorry if the kids are a little noisy. I didn't think much of it. Crying babies don't bother us much, as my wife and I have many nieces and nephews, and we babysat our friend's two-year-old once a week before we relocated. Shortly after moving in, we realized that our upstairs neighbors were in fact a little loud, but not the woman or either of her children, but a man who we didn't even know was there for the first week or so. At first, we thought he was just being noisy while playing video games or watching football. Every other day or so, there'd be a two to four hours of loud music stomping and shouting. It wasn't hard to make out what he was saying since he was literally shouting as loud as he could. He would often shout racial slurs like the N-word and stupid fucking cracker and stupid ass white boy. My wife and I were both white and again, just assumed he was talking about football or a video game and tried our best to wear headphones turn up the TV, or ignore it. One of the strangest parts was that we never heard the children make a beep. There was stomping and what sounded like furniture being scraped across the floor or slammed on the ground, but never crying kids or anything like that. This went on for about a month while I started looking into local noise ordinances and how to report a disturbance. One night in December, the nosy neighbor stayed up late until 11.30 p.m. with his usual routine of screaming, loud music, and banging. My wife and I are night owls, so we put up with it begrudgingly because he never seemed to make the noise at a time that the front desk of our apartment complex was open in order for us to make a complaint. The following morning, the neighbor woke us up at 8 a.m., just as rowdy as the night before. I called 311 to attempt to make a noise complaint as our apartment office didn't open until 10 a.m. and was told a cop would come by and tell the neighbor to quiet down. I left for work about 10 minutes later, but my wife had the day off and told me the neighbor was silent the entire day. After that, we started seeing the kids on the patio from time to time and heard the youngest crying or screaming once in a while. Normal kid noises that really didn't bother us. Things were quiet for a few weeks. Then, starting in late January, early February, a new strange vibrating sound began occurring late at night. Each night, which was strong enough to shake the whole bedroom and our unit below. 
The noise was only audible within our bedroom, and the walls and everything attached would vibrate throughout the night. This was annoying, but I figured it to be piping or something uncontrollable in the building itself. We turned on a noise machine each night and slept with pillows on our heads to block the vibrating noise. Then, on February 12th, after having difficulty sleeping due to the loud vibrating noise, I woke up at 9 a.m. to what sounded like furniture being moved over and over and dragged along the floor of the apartment above me. There was pounding and scraping and extremely loud footsteps, which sounded purposeful. This noise continued until about 3.30 p.m., and I was unable to block the noise out with my headphones. My wife left for work and my sanity with her. Unfortunately, I let my emotions get the better of me and slammed the roof of my unit three times with a mop handle trying to send the message that they were being ungodly loud. But not feeling comfortable enough to approach the neighbor face to face after hearing the term stupid ass white boy and other derogatory statements getting shouted from his apartment multiple times just a few months prior. The noise stopped and for a moment I thought I had succeeded in getting my message through. Maybe one to two minutes later, there was a knock on my front door. I'm not a confrontational person at all, but I answered the door to at least own up to the banging on my part. As soon as I opened the door, I was met with a five foot five inch man who immediately asked, Is that you banging on the ceiling? Yes, I answered. You guys have been really loud since early this morning. Before I could get another word out, the neighbor exploded, shouting, Why wouldn't you come knock on the door like a man? And calling me the P word. I can't say it. Sorry, guys. I admit having this man shouting at me after keeping me from a good night's sleep for a few weeks and making my home a generally unpeaceful place I was pretty upset as well. I don't remember everything that was shouted, but a few highlights were him making fun of my appearance. I have long, dark hair, which he seemed fixated on. He told me he was going to be nosier than ever now, and him calling out that he knew it was me who called the cops. He kept saying, <laughs> And where did that get you, huh? I told him obviously nowhere, but I'd be happy to call them again. While we were shouting, I saw both of his kids come down the stairs, stare at us, and run back up. Eventually, he started climbing the stairs, which he could still see me through and grab his crotch, with both hands telling me to suck his mm-hmm. I took a step out of my door and asked, You would like that, huh? This made him even more upset. He rushed back down those stairs and got within a few inches of my face. I was honestly worried that he was going to hit me, but my pride was way too inflated to back down to him. We shouted a little more. He laughed about how loud he was about to be, and I told him that I'll just keep calling the cops every day if I have to and that I was going to get his ass evicted. I don't actually believe I have the power or ability to do so, but hey, I was pissed. The neighbor immediately went back into his upstairs apartment, began slamming on his floor extremely loudly for about five to ten minutes, screaming at his wife or kids or both. Meanwhile, I called 911 and asked them to send someone because the neighbor had said something along the lines of, you want to do something about it? and got in my personal space, which felt like it was only a single step away from a physical threat. The cop came and spoke to me and the neighbor separately. He advised I no longer get the police involved, but take it straight to the apartment management. 
The neighbor was silent the whole rest of that day. I followed up with a call to the apartment complex and told them the story so far. They told me to notify them if anything else happened. Since that date, the noise has been even better in some spots and worse than others. The noise from the woman and the kids seems more considerate, with the vibrating at the night happening much less often and less intensely, leading me to believe it may be a space heater or something similar that they have control over. Meanwhile, when the male individual's home, the banging and scraping noises are worse than ever. As I type this at 6 p.m., the banging noises have been occurring since around 10 a.m. this morning. The yelling also has resumed, but hasn't been occurring outside of 12 to 7 p.m. lately. He or the other people living with him have also started leaving random bits of trash, hangers, kid toys, etc., strewn across the gravel by my front door, but I'm unsure if this is purposeful or not. I believe I may be looking to break this lease and move somewhere else soon. I enjoyed the amenities and the location, but being in the apartment feels slightly dangerous with this individual above me, and I don't feel comfortable walking to and from my car into the apartment most days. I've started carrying pepper spray in case he attempts something more physical than the last confrontation. I also don't feel comfortable having guests as I don't know what he'll be screaming racial slurs at the top of his lungs. This morning, I spoke to a kind woman at the apartment front desk, and they mentioned something about issuing some kind of violation, since this is my second complaint. But I do also fear anything of a retaliatory nature. I have a cat and my wife alone in the apartment some days, and fear that he'll come knocking when I'm at work. She also mentioned that the next step would be getting legal involved. But I have no interest in any of that, as I'm not looking to pay any legal fees soon. Any advice or feedback would be greatly appreciated. I know I'm no saint in this whole exchange, but I just want to do what's right for my little family. Never move in with a man or woman you've never personally known. I got a roommate from hell this way. The man tortured me psychologically when I turned his sexual advances down, then stole thousands of dollars from me over time, even used my Amazon account to open an account. He got some of my personal info, like social, etc., as well. Once I left after calling the cops to help me leave, he showed up at the Apple store I was at just a day after I left. Even though I left to go live on the streets, no family or friends as I was severely abused as a kid, I've been on my own since 14. Actually, so I'm accustomed to surviving on the streets for periods of time. I was a million times happier than I ever was in his nice apartment, surrounded by nice things and a fancy car. I felt so relieved, even just living in a concrete garage. I was a million times happier sleeping on concrete with a pillow made of a towel and tiny little blankets in the cold and heat than I ever was living there with him. He spent his time psychologically torturing me and I don't regret leaving at all. He would bang on the wall across from mine every morning, and late at night, too, to startle me awake. He'd throw pebbles or tap on my window in the middle of the night to scare me or keep me on edge. He'd give me weird little candies and teddy bears as if we were dating. Even ordered stalkerish love items from my own Amazon account. Who the fuck spends this much on a Christmas ornament that says, I'll always love and follow you, or something along those lines, just 
Yikes. If I'd go to the restroom, he'd run and kick his foot at the door so loud and suddenly that it sounded like a door being kicked down. He'd steal my items if I left them alone for even a second, so I'd have no way to go out. If I had plans, then he'd put them back once I remembered them or when it was too late for me to leave for my plans. He kept me home this way. If I got any mail or a package, he'd interrogate me. What did you order? I need to know. Like he owned me or something. Towards the end, I was leaning doors and furniture up against the door because he picked my bedroom lock before while I was gone. And when I'd wake up sometimes, there was stuff missing or moved in odd ways. So I knew he was creeping around while I was asleep. He was an absolute freak. I wouldn't put anything past him since he showed me how psychotic he was. If I was happy or in a good mood, he'd start criticizing and nitpicking at my body, hair, face, behavior, voice, etc. Anything he thought I was insecure about. I even developed an ED because he always did this and mocked and laughed at me when I would make or eat food. Anytime I'd leave my bedroom, he would rush out of his room to stand right behind or near me like a weird little dog that follows you around panting. He'd even piss in my hair products, skincare products, vitamins, etc. He'd throw out food I had just bought, steal my cash, and even use my debit cards. He even ordered 30 to 40 plus items off my Amazon account without my knowledge or consent. It was the strangest thing if anyone else had dealt with this. They'd go insane. I still have trouble believing this stuff happened, as it was just so crazy to even think that someone is that crazy to do this. So, to you all, please be careful who your roommates are. You never know what they are capable of. I've had issues with my neighbors before, but this is where I draw the line and I need some help. Background. My neighbor is virtually never home, like ever. His teenage daughter, her baby and the baby's dad inhabit the apartment more than the actual tenant. But within the last month or so, the baby daddy, I'm calling him BD going forward, has had his friends over more and more frequently, so much so that I'm under the impression he's living there too. Over the past weeks, there have been comings and goings of people I've never seen before. It's just a revolving door of randoms. This doesn't really bother me. It's not causing me any real issues other than it being a little awkward to walk out to my car and there's five people standing in front of my or their door. The apartment entrances are maybe a foot and a half from each other, leading directly out to the parking spaces. Issue. There are external outlets on the front and backs of each unit horizontally with flip covers, very basic. I never use the exterior plug, so the covers are always flipped down. Occasionally, I'll come outside and one of the covers is flipped open. I started to suspect my neighbor because once before the daughters mentioned the electricity being cut off all the time, but I didn't have any proof until Tuesday. I opened my door to see if a package was delivered, and I saw a phone plugged into my outlet. I could have exploded. I was so angry. I yanked it out of the plug and shouted, Is this yours? Through the neighbor's gate. And when the friend walked to open the door, I told him, I would appreciate if you would at least ask me first. I immediately called the leasing office to ask if there was a way to add outlet locks to the covers, but it seems they aren't willing to do that. 
Their answer is to send a note to my neighbor telling him to not use my plugs. I've tried to text my neighbor to let him know what's going on, but I think his phone is either disconnected or he's just not responding to me. What should I do? I've considered cameras, trying to add my own plug covers, leaving a note on their door telling them to stop using my plugs. But I didn't know if Reddit had any other ideas I just haven't thought of. I'm half tempted to send a cash app request for half the electric bill. I'm beyond pissed and I want to take action. I really need some help. Oh yeah, update. Many of you suggested to go to the breaker and start flipping switches until I found the ones that the external outlets are connected to and leave that off. I got two lamps, plugged them in to the front and back outlets, and after flipping all the switches, I learned two things. One, the exterior outlets are connected to my unit. Some said they could be independently paid for by the leasing office but they are not. And two, I learned one, by flipping the kitchen switch and living room switch and all the lights, including the lamps I plugged in, turned off. So I can't use the breaker idea. I've gotten a lot of other good suggestions and I'd be headed to the Home Depot shortly to go get some lock boxes and cover the outlet. Any more suggestions are always welcome. My daughter has been living in my apartment building, small four unit building directly across from my unit for almost two years. This 25 year old woman has been having people live with her randomly off and on, and they have been awful, loud all hours of the night, making threats against other tenants, their visitors parking in the driveway during snowstorms, blocking the entire pathway. She does not respond at all to conversation. We tried the civil approach and she went mental at us for even trying to reason with her. Besides the banging on the walls, moving furniture around all hours of the night and staying up all night being ignorant. She also does things such as consistently flush the toilet when you are in the shower, eavesdropping, and then doing whatever she can to mess with you. Example, I say I'm gonna lay down for a bit. 30 seconds later, she's blasting music. And to top it all off, I was discussing back in January that we had to take our garbage out the following day. And in the middle of the night, she had a friend remove our trash bin off the property. And when my mother went to set trash on the ground beside all the bins, that neighbor went out and assaulted her and went psychotic. Due to the housing crisis in my province, my management is struggling to get tenancy to accept a proposal for a hearing. This neighbor is psychotic and needs to be evicted. It's gotten to the point of threats from her and groups of people who show up that I don't even feel safe going downstairs around and make sure if I do, I have a weapon up my sleeve for my own protection. For reference, her name is Adrian, and she is a nightmare. So if any landlords happen to see this from Halifax and someone in their mid-twenties named Adrian happens to be trying to rent out a new apartment when she finally gets kicked out. Beware of what you are in for. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true neighbor from hell stories. I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes. Nat Davies, Dola Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Tammy Slayton, Les Crispin, Coach Stonewolf, Denise S., Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's niece. 
thank each and every one of you for your continued support for the channel. Now, with all of that being said, if you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.